Hello everyone, Salutamo. This is Steven Uresco of Restaurant Adventures with Steve Yuri. For today's restaurant adventure, I will be taking you to a Sicilian restaurant called Vespri Siciliani, located in Boca Raton, Florida. I often speak of my Croatian heritage, and although my father was born on an island near the Croatian coastal city of Zadar, my mother's side of the family was from Sicily. My maternal grandfather was from the town of Kakamo in northern Sicily, and my maternal grandmother's parents were from the town of Agrigento in southern Sicily. So when I learned there was a Sicilian restaurant in Boca Raton, I just had to try it. It is called Vespri Siciliani, and it is located in a picturesque plaza of restaurants and shops featuring eateries and bistros of many nationalities. And while there are a plethora of Italian restaurants all across South Florida, Vespri Siciliani stands out as the only Sicilian-oriented Italian restaurant that I know of in this area. And having spent a two-week vacation in Sicily several years ago, I was eager to recreate some memories. The small and intimate restaurant was beautifully decorated with reminders of Sicily everywhere, from the typical glazed tile work to the festive ceramic lampshades and other artwork. There was even a small trademark Sicilian cart resting on a high shelf. On the wall hung a shelving unit in the shape of the island of Sicily that held an assortment of Sicilian bric-a-brac and bottles of wine. But what immediately caught my eye was the stunning and attention-grabbing wood-fired oven resplendent with red and black ceramic tiles. The fire was kept constantly fed from a pile of firewood stored on the outside patio. Another feature of the restaurant was the cozy and attractive bar area. Although I did not dine there, I realized that it would be an ideal place to sip glasses of Italian and Sicilian wine while feasting on authentic Sicilian tapas. Once I sat down at my table, I perused the menu, deciding on my food order. In the meantime, I quenched my thirst with a big bottle of San Pellegrino sparkling mineral water while munching on a basket of fresh baked flatbread. I started out my meal with grilled octopus. Always one of my favorite appetizers, the gigantic tentacle was tender and succulent, resting on a bed of arugula and tomatoes and drizzled with olive oil and balsamic vinegar. Having seen actor Stanley Tucci on his TV show sampling a donkey carpaccio while in Sicily, I was inspired to order the beef carpaccio. The raw steak was sliced so thin that one could read a book through it. The meat was tender and each bite effortlessly melted in my mouth. It was topped with a salad of arugula, tomatoes, and shavings of parmigiano. My next course was the Paparadella alla Norma. This is a typical Sicilian dish of tomatoes, eggplant, and fresh basil topped with a grated salty dried ricotta cheese. The rich sauce was savory and full of flavor, accentuated with intermittent bites of soft and tender eggplant. This is one of my favorite pasta dishes, and it was something that my grandmother rarely made. For my main course, I ordered the whole salt-encrusted Branzino Mediterranean sea bass. The presentation was outstanding, as the fish was brought to the table flambe style. Naturally, I took plenty of photos of this unusual serving method. But once I tasted the fillets, I was very impressed. The fish flesh was fresh and tender with a light and delicate flavor. Nevertheless, in true Croatian style, I splashed on some olive oil to enhance the flavor. But really, the flavor of the fish did not need any enhancing. The essence of the Branzino stood alone. My fish feast came with a delicious and perfectly seasoned side of traditional broccoli rabe. After this, I checked out the menu for desserts. I saw that they had cassata, a delicacy that my grandmother used to make for us on special occasions. However, when I found out that they no longer carried it, at first I screamed quietly. I then opted for the rum baba cake. Shaped like an elongated muffin, the spongy pastry was soaked in rum. They also had Sicilian cannoli on the menu. However, I decided to save that for another visit. I wasn't through yet. I ordered two goat pizzas for me and my wife. For her, I ordered a pie topped with anchovies and capers. 
for mine, I ordered a pizza topped with eggplant and parmigiana. Even though I was still full from dinner, when I got home, I dug into the pizza and relished the taste of the freshly baked pie. The crust was soft and bread-like. The sauce was fresh and homemade tasting, and the eggplant topping was well flavored with the parmigiana adding a delicious saltiness. The next day, I demolished more of the pizza for breakfast. Cold, of course. It was really nice to get in touch with my culinary heritage. My main food server, a young woman from the state of Lombardia, was very attentive and sweet. And the owners of the restaurant, who are from the town of Bagaria, which is not far from Kakamo, were very gracious. They seemed very happy to learn that I was a Sicilian paisan. Half of me, anyway. Well, I really hope you enjoyed this week's restaurant adventure. Thank you for tuning in. This is Steven Uresco of Restaurant Adventures with Steve Yuri, signing off for now. Until next time, saluti! <laughs>